Before we start, I do want to mention that QTabs is almost always used with QTab panels. However, it doesn't have to be used with QTab panels. And I'll show you some situations where you might use panels and you might not. So panels are basically something that shows your content. So you can imagine you might have some panels down here and then your tabs would sit at the top. And then as you select different tabs, different panels will show. So I'll show you that later on in the video, but just know that QTabs can be used on their own, QTab panels can be used on their own, or you can use them together. Okay, with that out of the way, let's continue. We'll come up here and we'll say Q-tabs, notice that it's tabs plural, and we'll V-model current tab. So we're going to need that variable, const current tab is equal to a ref, we'll pull in ref, and how about we set that equal to something like cake by default. So cake, and the other options that I might end up having is coffee, I like to just write them down here so I'm ready, and then ice cream. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Next, let's open this up, and then we'll start throwing some tabs in there because on its own, it's not going to do anything. Q-tab, so we use these two components together, tabs and the tab component. And then the name is the most important attribute here. It's going to be required, and we'll set that equal to cake. So now let's copy paste that down a couple of times for the other two. Double click that, copy, paste it in there. Double click, copy, paste. And we'll also add some labels as well. Shift, Alt, down, down, space, label is equal to, and then double click that, Alt, double click, holding Alt, double click, Control C, click here, Shift, Alt, down, down, Control V. I like to let you know what I'm doing with these, um, with these hotkeys so that you can also learn how to do this kind of stuff fast. All right, so we got cake, coffee, and ice cream. Now let's just check that that is in fact working and modeling the data by having a pre-tag here and we'll set that equal to current tab. And there we go, notice that we are modeling data behind the scenes there. Cool, we won't need that anymore, so let's carry on. Another thing I wanna do is set an icon. And it just so happens that these name labels match up with the icon for all of these tabs. So let's copy paste that down, that and that. Double click, hold alt double click, double click, and change that to icon. And there we go. Cake, coffee, and ice cream. Three things that I love. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at what we can do on the Q tabs. Class is equal to background dash indigo. I'm gonna do that just to sort of add a bit of theming in here. Now, of course, that doesn't really look good because they're both dark backgrounds. So let's come in here and say text dash white. That's something that you might wanna do. And do notice that it changes the icon, the text, and this indicator that sits below to white as well. So that's kind of cool. By setting the text, it changes all three of those to white. Another thing we can do, especially if we're running out of space, is say inline-label. And that just means that the icon is going to sit next to the label. Now, something else to note is that if we start running out of space here, let me just copy paste this down a couple of times. Paste, paste. And there we go. Notice that we're running out of space Oh, and see how we're getting uh, this scroll bar at the bottom. I'll come up here, get rid of these classes. And there we go. So if it doesn't have enough space in the parent container, we're going to get this arrow so that we can easily move across the icons, which is really cool. And this plays really nice on phone devices as well, because you can also click swipe on a phone device to scroll across and see what other icons are available to you. So knowing that, notice that this right icon is overlapping our coffee tab here. So that's a little bit annoying, I think, because it's kind of difficult to see the icon. So what we can do is say outside dash arrows. So that's just going to move those arrows to the outside. And there we go. Notice that it's kind of standing on its own now so that it's a little bit more visible. That's good to know. What else can we do? Another thing we can do is make the indicator a little bit more narrow. So currently the indicator takes up the full width here, and that might be easier to show you if I change the text to a different color. So how about we get rid of the background and we say text indigo, and there we go. Notice we get this line at the bottom. What we can do is say narrow indicator. So you might prefer that style, giving us a narrower indicator on the bottom of these items. And we can also change the alignment of these tabs. 
So if I come in here and say a line is equal to left, and then we make the screen a little bit bigger, it's going to align those to the left. And then we can do the same for right. We can make it sit in the center. We can also say justify. Now this one's important to know because justify makes it basically take up the entire width. So another thing we can do is set a breakpoint. So if I set this equal to left, you might want to say on desktop devices or larger devices, I want them to just show in the left like this, kind of like breadcrumbs. But then we can set a breakpoint here. Breakpoint, and I'll set that equal to 600. And what that does is it says if the width is less than 600, then I'm going to change the alignment to justify so it takes up the full width. So check this out. And there we go. Once we get to a smaller screen size, it takes up the full width. Larger screen sizes, it's just going to align to the left like we've specified here. So it's good to know you've got that breakpoint option. It makes it just a little bit easier dealing with mobile devices. Okay, what else can we do? We can also say no dash caps. That means that it's not going to capitalize by default. We can still add capitals to the first letter. So for example, in this label, I'll do a capital C for cake. And let's do it for coffee and for ice cream. There we go. So if you want more control over the capitalization, you can say no caps. You can also make it dense. So if you need a little bit more space, we can say dense and it'll just dense it up a little bit. I'll get rid of that because we'll use the default design. And one more thing I wanna point out is that you can do individual colors if you need to for these tabs. So sometimes you want a color to really describe the thing that you're talking about. So let's get rid of this. And so that's using the default color now. And let's come in here and say text color is equal to pink. That's gonna be a nice looking cake if it's pink. Oh, sorry, that's meant to be a class. Class is equal to text dash pink. There we go, copy, paste, paste. And then coffee, how about we make that like brown dash eight, uh, nice coffee color. And then for the ice cream, we can say, oh, I don't know what color is ice cream. <laughs> I guess it depends. We might just say white for ice cream. No, then we won't be able to see it. How about like a grape ice cream? Maybe like indigo, like a purple grape. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got individual colors for all of these. That's totally possible. Okay, undoing all of that, I'll bring us back to a simpler example. Save it and let's push on. Now something you definitely need to know is using tabs with tab panels. So these are totally separate like I mentioned at the start of the video. You've got tabs here and now underneath that, I'm going to add the panels. So let's come in here and say Q-Tab-Panels plural. The way this works is very similar to the tab component, very similar. Now we can say Q-Tab-Panel singular and we can use the names that we have for all of these tabs. In fact, I could probably just come up here, copy all of that, and let's paste that inside of the tab panels. Select that, Control D, Control D, and then say Q-Tab-Panel. Now I'll get rid of the icon for all of them and get rid of the label for all of them. And the names are going to align up anyway, so that should be good. Now we can say v-model is equal to, if I can spell it, <laughs> current tab. So notice they're modeling the same thing behind the scenes. So basically what happens is when we select cake, uh, this current tab changes because the Q tab is going to change that since current tab is being modeled there. And therefore the tab panels is going to change its current tab. And so now it knows to show the cake panel. So hopefully that made sense. There's nothing inside of these panels, so we're going to have to throw something in there as well so we can actually see something there. Let's just say the word cake, and I'll do the same thing for these ones too. Paste, paste, oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Grab up to there, and then we'll just paste it down like this. There we go. I'm just, I'm trying to be too fancy with my doing things quickly. <laughs> so there we got cake coffee, ice cream. Now you can do other stuff with QTAP panels, like tell it to be animated. And there's all sorts of stuff that we've got available on panels, but I'm not going to go over it in this video. I'll save that for the QTAP panels video. This is basically a whole different world of possibilities. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is routing. This is particularly important, I think, because usually 
you don't just want to use a Q tab, you want to use a Q tab route. So I'm going to copy that and paste it onto these ones as well. So they're all Q tab routes. And now this is basically the same as using a router link component. So we can say two here and then feed it an object and say, for example, the name of the route, etc. Or I'm just going to use the simpler way of doing it and say, hey, take me to the cake route. Copy that, paste it there, paste it there. This one will take us to the coffee route and this one will take us to the ice cream route. That could be a song. <laughs> now control two. I'll say control P and take me to the routes file. And let's just create a bit more space here. I'm going to copy paste that down three times for each of the routes. One, two, three. Come across, make sure we've got commas for all of these. And then come back again. So they're all going to take us to the same page, but since we have a different route now, it's going to open a different tab. I'll show you what I mean. Cake. This one is going to be coffee, and then this one is going to be ice cream. So basically, I'm making sure that path aligns with what I've added to two here. All right, so let's go ahead and save this, and then close it out. Something doesn't look right. Let's refresh the page. Oh, I've done it in reverse. It's not QTAB route. It's Q route tab. Ha, there we go. Now we can say cake, and notice that it shows up in the route as well. Same with coffee and ice cream. And here's the other cool part. If I refresh the page now, it takes us directly to the ice cream tab. If I select coffee, refresh the page, it takes us directly to the coffee tab. This is actually really important. One of the things that annoys me about a lot of websites is they have tabs like this, but they don't actually save the state of the application because it's not included in the route often unnecessarily, or like the developer just hasn't thought of it, you know, which is fine. We have a lot to think about as developers, but I highly recommend where you can use the Q route tab instead of the Q tab component so that you've got that little bit of extra tracking of where the user is in the application. Now, I, I will admit there are some situations where it just doesn't make sense to use a Q route tab. So for example, Quasar's API cards, you wouldn't really use a Q route tab there because you might have three or four API cards in one page. And in that case, you can't really have a route for it. It doesn't really make sense. So yes, there are situations where you don't need to use the route tab. However, a lot of the time, especially if you only have one set of tabs, then you might wanna use the route tab over a normal tab. All right, I'm beating a dead horse here. I think you get the idea. Gosh, that's a horrible expression, isn't it? Beating a dead horse. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> what else can we do? Let's come down here and just add something else into the tab group. So you might not know this, but you can just throw anything inside of there and it's going to show up inside of the tab group. So let's do that. Let's add a Q-button-dropdown and give it a label equal to more. Save it and there we go. Now we've got this more button. But currently it doesn't really fit in this situation. It kind of looks weird. So let's come in and say stretch so that it takes up the full height. And what else? We might make it flat so it doesn't have that shadow because the shadow kind of ruins the design. And there we go, now it kind of fits in. Next, let's actually add a menu in there. So I'll come in here and I might just say Q-list, Q-item, and then Q-item-section, one of my favorite components, the Q-list. And then we'll just say one there. And then we'll grab this item copy paste it down a couple of times. This one will be two, this one will be three. Save it, and I'm gonna Alt click there, there, and there, and then make sure that this is clickable. So now let's come down here, and we've got a menu, and we can click on these items. However, clicking on them doesn't close the menu, so let's just come in here and say auto-close. Now I can open the menu, click on an item, and it automatically closes for us. Pretty cool, so you can just throw other things in there if you need to. In fact, one thing that I've done in the past is added in another button, so Q-button, and then I might have an icon equal to add, and this might be for like adding something else on the list. Maybe you've got like a list of categories that the user can select, and then you might want to add another category, in which case you can have a button like this that would then open a dialogue where they can add another category. Maybe you could even do like a Q-space in here. Yeah, just to sort of push it to the side and then I would flatten this. Anyway, you can play around with that and use it however you like. 
So there is one more example I want to show before closing this video, and that's using the Q tabs inside of the toolbar, because this is a common thing where you might have some navigation inside of the toolbar. So I'm going to replace this Quasar version that we get by default with some tabs. In fact, let's just use what we've already got. I'm going to remove the button and this drop down. So we're at a simpler example. There we go. And now let's grab these tabs here and I'm going to cut those. And we've still got the tab panel, which is kind of cool. Now control P and let's jump into the main layout. And let's replace this Quasar version, which is this part here. So I'll select that, control V, save it. And there we go. Now we've got the tab showing up. Let's just make it look good. And we can do that by changing the color to text white so it suits the blue background a bit better. And there we go. Now we can change the tab like so. So in this case, you would have to do a little bit of extra work to make sure that the tab panels are going to change as the route changes as well. But there we go. You get the idea. And I think the reason this isn't changing is because we need that current tab variable. So let's come down here. And in setup, we can say cons current tab is equal to a ref. We'll just make that empty by default. And we'll expose that on the template because this isn't using script setup. And there we go. How cool is that? We can really easily create a very nice navigation menu inside of the top toolbar. So there we go. That's Quasar's Q tab component. Oh, and I think there is one more thing that I missed, which is making these tabs vertical. So how about we come back here to the index page and then I'll control Z so I get those tabs back in and we can say vertical. Maybe I did show that, I can't remember. And now we've got vertical tabs and it's not really working in this example. And that would have to do with some of these settings. So let's get rid of that. And maybe we can align everything. Yeah, we'll probably align everything to the left as well. How about this? Align, I'm just kind of playing now. Align left. Right, that didn't work. How about if we wrap it inside of a div? So we'll go Control Shift P wrap and put that in a div. Man, this is gonna bug me now. Why is that centered? Let's unwrap the div. And just remove a couple of these things. All right, there we go. So now I guess what we could do is use something like a splitter component. So let's grab all of this. Control Shift P and we're going to wrap that inside of a Q dash. First I need to say wrap and then Q dash splitter. You could probably stop watching now. I'm just having fun. And then we could say, this is the before, and we could throw all of these tabs inside of there. And there we go. And then let's have another one for after. So we'll say template uh, after for the other part of the splitter. And then we can throw all of the panels inside of there. So let's do this, throw them in the after. And is this going to work? Oh, we're not modeling anything on the splitter. So now we have to come down here and say const splitter is equal to, we'll make that a ref. And how we make, how about we make it a small number by default, like 150. Oh, but it's going to be a percentage. So I'll have to change that to pixels now. Let me get rid of those. So let's grab splitter here. And then we can say v dash model is equal to splitter. They have an example like this in the docs if you want to go check that out. Um, and now we have to say what the unit is. So we can say unit is equal to pixels. Yeah, there we go. Ha! How cool is that? So maybe we can make the unit a little bit smaller by default. So let's try 80 there. What does that look like? Yeah. All right, I think that's pretty cool. I don't know why you would use this, but there's probably some legitimate reason. Gives you kind of this nice menu available, but Anyway, that is Quasar's Q tabs component. Make sure you check out the Q tab panel component if you want a little bit more information of that one as well, because chances are, as I've mentioned a couple of times, you will use both of those together. All right, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video.